I know what you're thinking. Seamus, aren't you a bit dressed up for this video? But no, this is a Disney sequels video and you don't know, do you? Oh, well, this is big news. As of last week, I have officially been confirmed to be, drum roll, come on, just a little drum roll. That's all, you're embarrassing me. Come I have officially confirmed to be the world's leading expert on Disney sequels. I know, it's such a proud moment. I just, you want a speech? Well, I shouldn't, I, okay, I prepared a few words. I wanna, I wanna thank my mom. She's just, well, you, you didn't show me the Disney sequels as a kid. And what well, I could have come up with this series years ago if you didn't know. I actually, I don't want to thank my mum. I want to thank that person who tweeted me that one time, telling me to review all the Disney sequels. You're the one who deserves all the credit for this. You know, like, okay, I deserve most of the credit. You can have like 10%. Five. And like, I don't want to try and claim no one knows more about the Disney sequels than me, but I just don't think anyone understands them. Like I do. Whew. So, if you're wondering, did Seamus really do that entire bit and put on a suit just to make that joke? Yes, I will do whatever I can to always reference the Nightmare Organ when I can. And I feel bad because I didn't mention him in the last episode and now that's the most viewed episode of this series. And it's like, I have a duty to you guys and I feel like I let you down. So this is my apology and I guess with that said, let's get on to the Tarzan sequels because we're doing the Tarzan sequels today. Tarzan and Jane. This title isn't even that bad actually. Like it isn't Tarzan 2, but that's okay because it's Tarzan and Jane. Okay, I want to start this one a little bit different. Let's have a bit of fun for once and play a game. You're gonna love it. I want you to make a list of just the most crazy and ridiculous ideas for a Tarzan sequel possible. Like imagine you're a six year old child and you've just written the most ambitious Tarzan sequel in the world and you done? I've given you plenty of time to write this list. And you know what? I've already got your list on my phone. I know what you wrote, okay? Panther attacks. Getting stuck in an active volcano. That's a popular one. Having a fight on a military aircraft. Maybe some people might be there, but others might not. And the reason why I say this is because I think Disney hired a six-year-old to write this film because all of these things happen. Multiple panther attacks, big volcano scene, and of course, a final battle on a plane. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Okay, so to be fair, this isn't done in one continuous story. I don't know if that makes it any better, but the whole film is consisting of Jane, Turk, and Tantor reminiscing about things that have happened since Tarzan 1, but before the events of this film. And it consists of three stories, which I guess means it's time for another quick fire round! Story 1, Jane's friends come to visit. You know, as if the entire point of the first film's ending wasn't that they wanted to stay in the jungle. And I mean, I always assumed they would be presumed dead by everyone in Britain because they couldn't have been found. And yeah, I, I don't know, by this one, Jane's friends know she's there and come and visit her. I guess. Now I will admit, this one is by far the least crazy out of the three. Panther attacks kind of fits up with the theme of Tarzan, at least better than volcanoes and planes. And honestly, I've kind of struggled to put my finger on what was wrong with this film. But then, after second viewing, yes, I watched this film twice. Please feel sorry for me. I've never been left so aghast by a film in my life. I realized that no conversation lasts more than like 15 seconds without someone interrupting it or it just abruptly end it. Jane lives in your jungle world every day. Would it be so terrible to live in her civilized world for just one? No, it wouldn't. Thank you, Professor. Yes, that was actually a full conversation. And basically, I've come to the conclusion that this was originally planned to be the entire film, but they couldn't quite stretch it out to an hour long, so they ended up just cutting it down massively and throwing on two other shorts with it, and yeah, that's why everything in this just feels a little bit mess. Horribly cut down. Perplexed. Like it's missing pieces. Kind of that, that's the best way to summarize it. Anyway, so the general gist of the story goes, a character does something and then panthers attack that character while they're doing said thing. So these panthers are the antagonists and keep coming up, but also are just the worst panthers ever. Like they kind of stand around looking threatening, 
but never actually do anything. Like, I just thought I'd make a little montage of the Panthers just waiting around for nothing because I can't stress enough how often this happens and oh wow, Tarzan's hanging on a ledge. I should pounce on him and knock him off. But you know, I'm a fair guy. I'm gonna let him get back up and now I'll pounce. Oh wait, he got away? Running after Jane. Look at me, I'm the slowest panther in the world. Oh, my tail. Wait, do you want a standoff? We love standoffs. Hey, wait, no, don't, no! And that's story one. Story two, Tarzan gets Jane a diamond from a volcano. So right off the bat, the thing that confuses me the most about this one is that there's this trading post just right there in Tarzan and Jane's patch of the jungle with this guy working at it and I guess he must get some customers if he's still open and like I don't get that. Doesn't this go against the point of where this takes place? Anyway, Tarzan discovers these two evil guys trying to hunt some animals in the jungle and goes to the trading post to shout at them. And you'd think from there, Tarzan's pretty done with these guys. He tried to kill the animals in the jungle, which is like his family. He's never going to become friends with them, except they somehow convince him to help them look for a diamond within a minute of this whole interaction. So apparently he wants to get a diamond for Jane now for some reason and therefore he leads these two guys to the volcano because they couldn't find the volcano without him. It's not as if it's this massive thing that anyone would be able to see. They need him to lead them there. And then when Tarzan has the audacity to expect he can keep one of the diamonds for himself, they turn on him. Like they already had bags full of them, but yeah, they're evil. And even though Tarzan had done nothing but help them, evil. But don't worry, Jane comes to save him and that doesn't work actually. It all backfires as the bad guys blow up the volcano, leading to Tarzan Jane and her dad getting stuck in the bottom. And their luck really couldn't get worse. Like in the 10 seconds they're stuck down there, this volcano suddenly becomes active and yeah, they, 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 they're dead, except they're not because they surf off the volcano on a piece of rock. Yep, just properly surfing on molten lava. Are you really telling me an adult wrote this? Because anyway, they drop the diamonds into the lava, which is just destroying the jungle, I imagine. Like that's their home. They're just getting completely destroyed, but that's not addressed after that point. And then they arrest the evil guys and send them back home, I think, but yeah, I I that I couldn't work that out either. Story three: Jane's ex-boyfriend crashes into the jungle because his warplane is shot down. Yeah, I don't even think I need to say it. This one kind of just speaks for itself, doesn't it? I mean, if we really want to nitpick, which I do, it's a bit convenient how he just so happens to crash land right over Jane and Tarzan's heads, right? Like, was this intricately planned or just a massive coincidence? Because I'm honestly struggling to see how either of them work. So of course this leads to the film following the same standard procedure where Tarzan gets jealous, Jane gets mad at Tarzan for being jealous, everyone else then convinces Tarzan to apologize to Jane and let's play a game of guess what happens in this predictable Disney sequel. What do you think happened when Tarzan goes to apologize to Jane? You'll never guess it, I promise. Just, this is shocking. Tarzan goes to apologize, but just as he's about to do so, he finds out he actually had good reason to be jealous. What? I've never known a film go in such a unconventional and original direction. So yeah, Jane's ex-boyfriend, who I'm not actually sure if he is Jane's ex-boyfriend, I've just been calling him that. Well, he's a traitor to England and I don't know, he's spying on people or something. But Jane works this out and tries to stop him saying, God save the queen! I can confirm, us Brits say that all the time, even when there wouldn't have been a queen on the throne canonically. We still say God save the queen. Now, honestly, this is something that's bugged me more than it should have, but it's so abundantly clear that a bunch of Americans that have probably never been to Britain in their life just wrote this script and filled it with British stereotypes that don't make sense. He was our next door neighbor in Knightsbridge, daddy. I can just picture someone typing into Google, what's the most expensive area of London to live in? And being like, Knightsbridge. That works. And her dad suddenly got this obsession with cricket now. Say, you uh, wouldn't by chance know who's winning the test matches in cricket, would you all? England over Australia by eight wickets. Also, just to put it out there, the sentence England over Australia by eight wickets makes absolutely no sense. Again, I picture someone Googling cricket keywords and being like, wicket over. We can make a sentence out of this. And don't even get me started on all of the tea jokes. Like, it shouldn't bug me as much as it does. It's stupid, but... Ugh. Anyway, so the film continues with Jane's ex-boyfriend flying away with Jane as his captive and not only does Tarzan manage to catch up with them from here, like they are long gone by this point and he still manages to swing in and land on the plane but also Jane lands the plane onto a waterfall and 
they somehow don't die? And then this film does the weirdest twist of all where the evil guy gets away, but then when he hears Jane scream before her inevitable death, he just does a complete 180, you know, despite the fact he left her to die on the edge of a waterfall, saving them and letting them arrest him, even though he doesn't seem slightly bothered by it. It's like a case of his plan worked too well and they somehow had to get it so the good guys won, so they kind of made him turn himself in. It doesn't make any sense. And that's story free. And then finally with this film, it's revealed that Turk and Tantor were just telling Jane these stories to stall her so that Tarzan could throw her a wedding anniversary party and... Yeah, that's it. That's Tarzan and Jane. So for the first time in a while, I feel like we have a strong contender for the new worst one, and I feel like it's kind of similar to Beauty and the Beast Bell's Magical World in the sense that it tells three stories in one, and they were all really boring. For lunch! And this one, at least, it wasn't that boring. It was just a mess. So for that reason, I'm giving it a 2.6, just a bit better than Beauty and the Beast Bell's Magical World. And among all of these twos, there are a lot of films in that two region. And yeah, that's it. That, that, that's where it goes. Let's move on to the next one. Tarzan 2, you know, the third Tarzan movie is called Tarzan. I honestly, I can't work out why they've called it this. Like, I know this is unconventional, but I want to complain about this. Seamus complains about the title. Why have they called it Tarzan 2? Like, Tarzan and Jane came out three years before this, so there's no way there's a confusion like these came out at similar times and this one was like maybe thought to be the second one at a point. No, this was the third Tarzan film by all accounts. Like maybe they're trying to say that Tarzan and Jane just doesn't exist in the canonic storyline, which I'm here for because that film was hot garbage and yeah, yeah if that's the reason, fine, but... It was kind of like, imagine if they called the third Ant-Man film, Ant-Man 2, because the second one's called Ant-Man and the Wasp. It just, it wouldn't make sense, and I, I feel like that's a perfect analogy. My analogies usually aren't very good, but that, that, that was kind of perfect. Like, why have they called this Tarzan 2? And like, the thing is, it's not even a sequel. It's all about a young Tarzan, and I was inclined to say it was a prequel, but then I remembered that Tarzan actually starts with Tarzan as a baby, and he is actually an adult in that film till 24 minutes 17, so... I'm calling it a 24 minute quill. Just a whole film just kind of squeezed in there. But that's besides the point, being that there is no good reason for this film to be called Tarzan 2. Not only is it not the second Tarzan film made, but it's also not the second Tarzan film in the canonical timeline. Like, it's fine. No, it's not, it's not fine, but we're gonna move on. <laughs> this film is okay. Like, as Disney sequels go, it's above average. It's a little slow at times, but I didn't mind it. I spent way too long talking about Tarzan and Jane for this video already, but another thing that annoyed me about it was that it didn't have a single fake-out death. By the way, if you're new, Disney sequels love a good fake-out death. Like, especially with a character falling from a height into water and everyone assuming they're dead when they're not. You got a good chance of that happening in any given Disney sequel. And with The Little Mermaid, I gave it a pass. Like, how's someone supposed to fall into the water? They're already in the water, but oh my god, the amount of scenes on rivers and just that felt like they were leading up to someone falling from a height off a waterfall in Tarzan and Jane. <sighs> I'm not saying I want fake out deaths, but it at least checks a box of like, okay, well, you tried to do something. And let me tell you, Tarzan 2 doesn't just check this box, it demolishes it. And like basically the first scene of the film, the gorillas have to use this fallen tree as a bridge over this gaping passage with water under it, of course. And I was like, yes, this is a moment. Who's gonna be the fake out deaf today? Tarzan. Tarzan fake out death. Like the whole tree starts to fall and everyone successfully makes a rush to the end other than Tarzan who somehow then manages to survive by grabbing hold of a vine leading to everyone thinking he's dead. So yeah, I'm counting it. Welcome to another episode of Disney sequel fake out deaths. Okay, but all jokes aside, I don't actually mind the direction this film ended up going in, you know, showing Tarzan adapt to life in the jungle as he went from this character who couldn't survive on his own to, well, Tarzan. I mean, the execution was... Yeah, but I'm okay with it. It was fine. So the first thing that happens is he runs into these other lost apes who are not very smart. And that's putting it nicely. That's their entire personality. They're stupid and you should laugh at them. And I, I didn't laugh. It wasn't funny. And before you start, well, Seamus, this film isn't targeted at 22-year-old men. Need I remind you, I am the world's leading expert on Disney sequels. And I'm saying as a definitive statement, that this wasn't funny. These aren't opinions, these are facts. But somehow, that isn't the weirdest thing about these two apes. Their mum is, uh, Mrs. Potato Head. It was a really weird creative choice to just animate Mrs. Potato Head into this jungle environment, but 
I gotta give props because I do like Toy Story, but I I'm, I'm still a little bit confused to why they did that. Okay, I'm joking, but seriously, are you telling me you're not supposed to hear Mrs. Potato Head here? My darling boys, my little treasures. What has Mama Gunda told you about fighting? I packed you an extra pair of shoes in your angry eyes. That's all I could hear anytime she was on screen. But yeah, so these three are kind of the bad guys and are afraid to leave the valley because they believe in this monster called the Zoogle, which isn't a real monster. It's just an old ape screaming into the valley and making the most out of a echo. It's not the best thought out plot, but they're stupid. You've just gotta, you gotta go with it. Tarzan, on the other hand, isn't stupid and manages to work out who the Zugor is within about 10 minutes of being stuck down there and suddenly just becomes a skilled jungle person and saves the Zugor because character development? I guess? And because of this, blackmails him into teaching him how to be an ape. And the Zugor says he can't do that because you're not an ape. And then Tarzan says, what am I? And then there's this montage of them trying to work out what Tarzan is and they realize he's not a lot of things. But the nice message is he's actually a Tarzan, you know. He's not an ape, he's a Tarzan. I'm fine with that, it's a nice message, guys. Come on, just let me appreciate this. You know, until he runs into Turk and Tantor, where they beg him to return to his life as an ape, which he agrees to pretty much instantly, so they all leave and then the mum and her two sons watch them leave the valley and think that they must know how to get past the Zugor, so decide to follow them. And yeah, again, the motivations in this film are very limited. Like, I feel like they're trying to convince themselves something's going on as much as something just is going on. Eventually they run into Tarzan's mom and the three children she has with her for this story. That's a whole nother subplot that we're not even gonna get into. And one of the brothers accidentally knocks them all off a cliff. Oh my God, we've got another Disney sequel fake out death. Yeah, there was actually just a ledge in the right place to catch them. Like, it's not as if the cliff had any other ledges, just the one, but good thing it was there, right? And now this is where things start to get a little bit confused. Okay, so Turk and Tantor start to help rescue the children and the ledge is pretty clearly there I said it's because fast forward like one minute and it's just disappeared with Tarzan's mum hanging on for her life Like I still don't know how the situation got so dire But it makes for a great final scene as Tarzan jumps into the waterfall grabs onto a vine and swings in to save her I mean you can't end a Tarzan sequel with that scene on a waterfall like that's a rule I don't know who made it, but it seems like it's a rule and that's it. Except also actually, the Zugor and Mrs. Potato Head end up having this fight where they're just shouting insults at each other while, you know, until Zugor accidentally compliments her and then they fall in love. And yeah, that's actually how, and they, they get married or something. It wasn't that bad, I promise. Okay, it was kind of bad, but compared to the other Disney sequels, it's a strong one. So I'm giving it a 5.4 and that makes it third on the list. Impressive achievement. And also, I should mention we have a new tier on my Patreon right now called the Movie Party Tier, where once a month me and my patrons watch a film together, and last month the film of choice was Tarzan and Jane, where we all just had a great time cringing and... Yeah, mostly cringing, but cringing together. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, make sure to check out my Patreon in the description down below. And I guess that's all I've got for you guys today. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go off script a bit here because I'm not gonna lie, I felt a bit weird making this video given everything that's going on in the world right now. Like, it just, it didn't feel right. I felt like there are so many more important issues that need to be addressed than the Tarzan sequels that came out 15 years ago. So I just, I wanna, I wanna say a thing or two before this video ends. I made a few statements on Instagram and Twitter this week and I feel like with the platform I have and the views a video like this is going to get, I need to use it to speak out and tell people that Black Lives Matter. I have been spending most this week trying to educate myself. This video has been delayed massively because I've just been reading up, learning, hearing other people's stories. And I mean, that's a really important thing to do. So my call to action for you is to go into the description. In the top lines of the description, I have left a few links to some things that I think you should read up on, sign petitions, and join me in donating to these causes. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking here. You can watch another video by clicking here. You can check out my Patreon here and in the description down below, but prioritize the Black Lives Matter links. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.